Praise the Lord. God bless you. And welcome once again to the prayer conference line for He's in Wonder Music Ministries of Apostolic Faith based in Chicago, Illinois. We are glad that you were able to join us today. We are happy to be in service for the Lord, with the Lord, doing the work of the Lord, praising the Lord, magnifying the Lord, and giving honor and glory, which is due unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are in a position of, we're in a position that we have to make a decision. Now, every day we make decisions every day. What to wear, what to eat, which route to take to wherever it is we are going. What to watch on television, which news program to watch, which program to watch that we watch daily or weekly or monthly. We make decisions all day. Some things we do out of routine. We get up, we go to the restroom, wash our face, brush our teeth, do our bodily functional duties, get dressed. But today there's a decision you need to make that will have an effect on your eternal residence. Meaning the place that you will spend all eternity. Now, eternity is a long time. It's unfathomable. I'm sure I didn't say that right. In the human mind. Because we are creatures. We are creatures of time. And we deal with time. Everything is on a time basis. The time you have to be at work, the time you have to be at the doctor's appointment, what time you're going to bed, what time you're going to eat, what time you're going to do this, what time you're going to do that. We are time creatures. <clears throat> but God has a system that was established way before time started. It's called eternity. You would. Here in the Bible, where they would reference to eternity past, eternity future. And I'm like, how is there a past eternity and a future eternity when eternity is, is everlasting and ongoing? But God existed in eternity past, before time started. He exists presently in eternity and is presently already existing in eternity future. That is a remarkable being that can be in past, present, and future simultaneously, knowing all, doing all, seeing all, being a part of all. Nothing exists without him. That is a individual, a creature, a being that you should surrender to and worship because of he is worthy. Now today I was thinking about what am I going to speak about and what what topic and so forth and so on. And a scripture came to me that is, is very, is, is used in the wrong way. It's not recited completely. And today I want to read it and then talk about it. Just for a few moments. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. A little back history. If you go to the beginning of Second Chronicles 7. I'll just read the first few verses. When Solomon had finished praying. Fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple and the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Now, 
when Solomon had finished, I mean, he did something. When he finished praying, it, it didn't happen before he prayed it. God could have done it for knowing and knowing ahead of time that Solomon was going to pray and what time he was going to finish. God could have done it without him praying, but God waited. Okay. When he had finished praying, which means he started praying. A lot of times we can't finish anything because we don't start it. You can't finish dinner if you don't start dinner. You can't finish a race if you don't start the race. Fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. I, I, it was a lot of occasions in the Bible that I wish I could have seen. Like in the upper room when they were there and, and the tongues of fire came down and landed on each one of them and they began to speak in other tongues that the Spirit of God gave others. I would have loved to have been looking through that window. No, I take that back. I would have loved to have been in the room. Counted among the 120, I believe, that was in there. I could have been in a corner. It wouldn't have mattered to me just to be there and to see, feel, and experience that that happened on that day. But here, you see, Solomon had finished praying. He was praying for something. And then fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices. They, they had sacrifices and offerings there for God. And God came down in his presence, filled the temple. Now, we go back to Genesis just for a moment and think about when Adam was walking with God in the cool of the day. The presence of God was in the was in the Garden of Eden with Adam, walking with him in the cool of the day. So God can come in and fill an area. He can come in and present himself. He can come in and make himself known. But there's something that we must do. And we go down to 14. If my people... See, first of all, say if something you want, something that has to be done, if it's up to you, my people, he already is establishing who we are. All souls belong to God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, stop being prideful, stop trying to do it on your own, stop leaning to your own understanding themselves and do what? Pray. What did Solomon do? He prayed and seek my face. See, you can't just pray. It's not a general thing. You just, you know, Father, you know, whatever. Do it. Don't do it. Have it. Don't have it. No, you, you, you have to be word that I made up specified about what you're doing. And pray, and then do what? Seek my face. Now, pause. You can't seek God's face and sin at the same time. You can't seek God's face, God being pure and holy and righteous. There's no flaws. There's no guile. There's no no incidences of, 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 of anything being wrong in God. So you cannot seek the perfect face of God committing sin. Turn and turn from their wicked ways. See, this is the part, that, that last part. They always seem to leave that out. They all say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, then I will hear from... No, 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 no. After actively seeking his face, then you must turn from your wicked ways. Stop sinning. Stop doing wrong. Stop engaging in the things that you are doing that you know are not of God. And then and then it says, then, after going back up to the beginning, after Solomon prayed, then the fire came down. So after you seek his face, being his people called by his name, humble yourself, pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways. See, after you do all that, then it says, I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins and heal their lands. Then I will answer your prayer 
as I did in the beginning, and fire came down. Then I will come in and wipe away all of the wrong that you have, the residue of wrong that you have in you. Then I will take those tendencies away from you. I will take the case of I, I can't help it, the, the, the case of the generational sins or the case of my father and mother did it, so I'm doing it. I will take all the excuses away. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. How many of you today want to hear from heaven? How many of you today want your sins to be forgiven and your land, your body, your mind, your soul to be healed. We hear from heaven and forgive their sins. Where have we heard that before? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission, pardoning, washing away of your sins. And then you shall receive. See, if you do this, then you will get this. If you want this, then do this and you will get this. I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. I want to be counted and my name in the Lamb's book of life. I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Well, if that's what you want, then this is what you must do to get the outcome that you are looking to receive. I want to be saved. Well, Humble yourselves and pray. Well, I'm doing that. Seek my face. I'm doing that. And turn from your wicked ways. Oh, so stop sinning. Stop sleeping with this man or woman that's not my wife or my husband. Stop thinking that because it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend, we love each other and that's good enough. Stop engaging in things that you know without someone on the outside having to tell you that's wrong. Then God will answer you. He will show up. See, Revelations, I believe it's 3 and 20, talks about Jesus knocking at the door. There's a song that said, Oh, sinner, why won't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. If God sends his son to your house, first of all, unlike my house, you have to knock, ring the bell, hit the window, call me first. Then I have to decide if I want to answer you. Look out the window and see if I want to say, oh, okay, I see that. I don't want to be bothered today. But when Jesus comes, he does not have to knock. The door belongs to him. The house belongs to him. The land belongs to him. The planet that the land is on belongs to him. The solar system that the planet is in belongs to him. The galaxy, the universe that all of this belongs to but all of this is belongs to him. But he'll knock on your door and humbly wait for you to decide if if you want to let him in. Now you know why most people won't let Jesus in is because their house is not in order. Their house is not in order. The reason your house is not in order is a couple of reasons why. First of all, you don't care. You're living a life of casual sin. And you're just doing what you want to do, whatever feels good, the way of the world today. Or your house is not in order because you want to get it in order, but you don't know how. You could be in a situation like being in a rowboat where you are plugging one hole, but the other part of you is drilling another hole. Now, you're all by yourself. You're plugging a hole in the front, but you are then drilling holes in the back. And you're going to back and plug that hole, and then you go up front and there's more holes drilled, and you're trying to figure out what happened. That's you. My aunt used to say I, I was in my own self way. That means that I know what flicks my switch and turns me on and floats my boat and all these other uh, uh, phrases that they use. So while I'm in the front portraying righteousness and putting on the face of I'm trying to do right my subconscious the real me however you want to say it is in the back committing sins doing what drilling more holes so you need to come together with yourself look at the man in the mirror and say hey 
We need to stop fighting each other. We need to stop being in our own self way. You need to stop drilling holes in the back while I'm in the front and vice versa. And, and then when you get tired of the front, then you start drilling them on the side and, and then you throw the, the oars over and then you, you drop anchor, but you don't connect it. So the anchor just keeps going down. Someone says your soul's not anchored in Jesus. See, some people's souls are anchored in Jack Daniels. They're ankle anchored in sexual activities. Uh, they're, they're anchored in lasciviousness. They're, they're anchored in the love of money. They're anchored in the love of this world. They're anchored in the love of everything except Jesus. Therefore, when the winds blow and the, the, the uh, uh, waves come, you are not anchored in something of stability. You're anchored in something that moves, that, that flows, that, that, that just goes with the wind. You don't want to go with the wind. You want to be anchored in Jesus so that your soul will not drift away. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Then, if, it didn't say maybe, in the other scriptures, it didn't say after you repent and be baptized, you might receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You shall. Well, I, I got baptized five years ago, and, and well, you know, God doesn't work on our timetable. He doesn't work on our schedule. He 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 doesn't send you an iPod, an iMessage, or an Android message, and, and and say, "Hey, I'll be doing this next week at four. No, he, he just waits to see what we're going to do, if we're going to be faithful, if we're going to continue to pray, if we're going to continue to seek his face, if we're going to continue to turn from our wicked ways, then he will deliver and heal and bless us and forgive us. But it's something that we must do. And we don't want to do that. We want God to do everything and we do nothing. God, yeah, you, you go ahead and and, and do that there. If we go to First John one and nine. First John one and nine. It reads, "If we confess our sins, if who we do what confess what our sins is right there. He who is he God through Jesus Christ is faithful. He's not a man that he should lie." And just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What did the other scripture just say? Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Let us hold fast. Let us hold on to it. Hebrews 11, what does it say? If, uh, uh, oh, God. Uh, we're talking about being faithful. We're talking about not sinning. We're, we're talking about holding on to God. We're talking about doing something that we cannot do on our own. Because, see, if we could do it on our own, I'll tell you a little secret. If we could do it on our own, what would be the need of Jesus? Hmm? What would be the need? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, faith is the substance, the, the foundation of things hoped for. I hope to get saved. I, I hope to be right. I hope. Okay. And the evidence of things not saying, you don't see your deliverance yet. You don't see the house yet. You don't see the things that you're praying for yet. But you have to have faith. Without faith, it says it is impossible to please God. You cannot. You cannot. The, it, it goes on to tell you and give you examples of those in the past who believed and those who did what was necessary. Some died 
in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that were that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Some people in the days of old and even now have prayed for things and they didn't see them up front, but God gave them the assurance that it, it's going to come to pass. Trust me, it's going to happen. Some people died, have not, did not see Jesus walk the earth, but they, they were confident and received confidence that it was going to happen. And God may have even gave them a, 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 little, a little preview. You know how you watch a movie and it says you can hit the preview and see what it's about. And they were okay with that. What are you okay with today? Are you okay with your life the way it is? Are you okay with your soul in the state that it's in right now? If Jesus knocked on your door right now, would you be okay with him coming in? If it was your time to depart this world today, are you confident that you will be resting in peace? Are you confident that your eternal residence has been established in the new heaven, in the new earth that is to come? Are you confident that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life? See, the devil comes to tell you that you're not for those who are. You sinned before, you know, so... How you going to make it? Well, it says if I confess, he's faithful to forgive and he'll cast it in the seal of forgetfulness and remember it no more. See, Jesus had to tell the devil. The devil came at Jesus and he knew who Jesus is. He came at Jesus trying to appeal, mess with his human side. Fully divine and fully human simultaneously. So he's going to come at us. And there's times that the devil will tell the truth. He's the father of lies. That's true. But he also tells the truth. Let's say you committed sins one, two, three. And the devil comes to you to remind you of that. He's not lying. You did it. If you got up and ate breakfast yesterday and and then sat outside and then went to work. So if I come to you and say, man, you... You ate breakfast, sat outside, and went to work. What are you going to say? You lying. No, it's the truth. So there are times where Satan will tell the truth to remind you of your sin. But you have to remind him, it is written, if I confess my sins, that he's faithful to forgive. It is written that he will cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. It is written that I'm a child of the king. It is written that my sins have been forgiven They were nailed to the cross with Jesus. The certificate of decrees that listed all of my sins from the day I was born to the day I died was also nailed to the cross and covered in blood and blotted out. Therefore, all of the sins past, present, and future have been forgiven. And I praise, magnify, and worship him for doing something for me that I could not do for myself. Then he'll say, if you resist the devil, he will do what? He will flee. He's coming back, though. What do you mean he's coming back? He don't come back. He'll flee. Okay, you you round round 20, go to you. But you you might lose one. You go, oh, man, he, he got me. But then just get up, take yourself off. Go to God, hey, Father, in the name of Jesus, I messed up. And God can look at you, I know. I knew this during the time of eternity past. <clears throat> you know, excuse me? You know, eternity past where I was at, before the foundation of the world and before anything was made, I already knew what you were going to do. I already forgave you through Jesus Christ. I already already knew. Just not a, See, in my conclusion... You're not surprising God, just just for the record. You might surprise your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, the government, the police, your pastor, 
you minister to the elders. You you might surprise yourself, <laughs> but you are never going to surprise God. You're going to wake up after doing something. Oh, I can't believe I did. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe I did that. And you said, oh, I'm surprised that I was able to. Oh, but God, like, you didn't surprise me. In the year zero, 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 I already knew it. I already forgave you. See, we harp and and drop anchor on sinful occasions. And, and then I, I think I was talking to someone not long ago. I said, we keep reminding God of our sins. Ooh, back in 82, ooh, that day behind the blink, the bleachers. And why'd you, why, why, why would you remind God of something? Like, would you go to your parents and remind them of something they forgave you for? You wrecked the car, you hit, got the car hit, or or whatever you did. Would you go back and say, Mama, remember you gave me that whooping because I had lost the rent money and we almost got put out? Would you? Ha, <laughs> ha, No. 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 You're going to try to be as quiet as possible. So, if it's people who are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, only then will he, will you hear from heaven and he will heal you and deliver you and forgive you. Jesus is knocking at your door. Let him in. Repent and be baptized. It could say if you repent, but it says it was telling you something. But It could say if you repent, but it was directly saying repent. And Peter got up with boldness and said, repent. He didn't have time to put no if in there and, and question mark. Repent and be baptized. Who? Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, which symbolizes the death, burial, resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that is my words for you today. If you want to hear from God, then you must pray, humble yourself, seek his face, and then you will hear from heaven. He will forgive your sins and he will heal your land. If, if you want something, you want a sandwich from Subway, you got to get up and go get it. Or you got to call the grub hub and they'll deliver it. But you have to do something. Unless you have faith the size of, the mu- of a mustard seed and you sit out on your porch and you have faith like that that you can just make stuff and magically appear out of the, not magically, but appear out of the air, hey, then go for it. But if you don't, which I'm sure you don't because you ain't, you're not doing it, then call on him. He wants you to call on him. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you and set you free. So if you want this, then Mm -hmm. do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And God is faithful. I'm not faithful like that. Nobody is faithful like that. I don't, don't. We're going into a little bit over time. Don't let any man, woman, boy, or girl, I don't care what their title is. I don't care what position they are. Tell you that they don't lie. The Bible even talks about that. If a person says that they don't lie, then they lie. I'm paraphrasing. Put not your trust in man. He lets you down every time. Well, well, you a pastor. You say trust you. No, I don't. I said trust the God in me. Don't trust me. I might let you down. Man. If I, got, I might do it on purpose. Mm-hmm. According to the situation. But I try very hard to, my wife taught me something years ago. I used to tell my kids what I was going to do. Yeah, I'm going to do this. She said, stop promising them that. I said, no, I have every plan. And I said, you have have every plan. You have every intention. But then when you get off work Saturday night and they they didn't work you 12 to 17 hours and you're so tired that you can't walk from the the vehicle to the house and and your eyes won't stay open. Oh, kids, I can't make it. My back, my leg. And and see, then now you lied. So I stopped promising myself, you know, based on you know, uh, current situations and statistical analysis and current weather conditions mm. after I get off work and the probability of things to come. 
<laughs> the things that I uh, say we will plan to execute uh, activities of this nature. Daddy, what that mean? You know, I might. I, might. <laughs> I have every intention. <laughs> I might. I plan to, and with the help of the Lord, De Valente. <laughs> what that mean? If the Lord's will. And if I will it also, my aunt, Pastor Denise Watson Gibson, told me that. I said, she asked me something. I said, if it's the Lord's will, I thought I was being, you know, ha, 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 I got her. If it's the Lord's will, she said, it could be his will, but if it's not your will, too. <laughs> she just grabbed me and laughed. She said, it can be God's will all day. But if you decide not to, because we have that choice, <laughs> then it could be God's will that you stop sending. But if you keep going to Sally Mo House and, and Ricky Bob, <laughs> then it's God's will for you to stop. But you keep driving there. If you keep sending, then God will <laughs> do what he have to do. But if you turn from your wicked ways, then he will do other things. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this has been Pastor Carl Dell, DeMond James Sr., Executive Director and Pastor of He's a Wonder Music Ministries of Apostolic Faith, coming to you to let you know if and then. If you do what you need to do, then God will do what only God can do. For more information about this ministry, if you want some more information about this ministry, then give us a call at 773-593-4972. If you want to visit us on the web, then visit us at www.hesawondermusicministries.org. God is faithful. God is righteous. God is holy. If you want to experience this, then seek his face. Well, until next Sunday, may God bless you and keep you in his precious, wonderful son, Jesus. Have a great and prosperous day. God bless you all. Goodbye.